Miscellaneous items, port, pot, the port pilot agreement right now, well, the port is still on design and permitting. We're getting 500000 a year from South Jersey Port Corporation. We get a little bit of a cable TV franchise, and you pay your bill, there's a local fee, a couple dollars to come to the municipality. And the BP redevelopment contribution, which ends this year, was $185,000. Collectively, we had those revenues were totaling $679,000, almost 9%. And then we have receipts from delinquent taxes as taxes were paid late. See that 534,000. And local, local property taxes, the stuff that's sitting up to artists that you're paying, contributes $4.6 million or 59% of our budget. Now, how do we spend that? And this is next one, Frank. Remember, we're condensing, we're condensing this budget document uh, just for so we can have this kind of discussion. Uh, this is what it is. I think I want the 10. See if you can, Frank, you have the 10 largest areas of the budget that's up there. Breaking our budget down, you'll see, you'll see quickly where the money is spent in large part. Police department represents 23% of the total budget, 1.8 million. The uh, health insurance, look at this number, $944,000 for health insurance benefits, uh, represents 12% of our budget. The reserve fund collected taxes in anticipation of people that are going to be sluggish is 653,000 or 8% change. Solid waste and collection. This is the cost to pick up the trash and dump the trash. $545,000. Half a million dollars a year, almost 7%. Our pension and Social Security contributions, $480,000, almost a half a million dollars, 6%. To run the entire highway department, which frankly has been undermanned, $475,000. Our insurance costs. These are, these are you know, the obvious we have to be insured. We belong to the joint. Uh, insurance fund, Tri-County, got it done a couple years ago, it's actually saved us, that's 340,000, 4%. Legal costs, this includes tax appeals, this includes anything we're involved in legal, but the tax appeals is the big number, because remember, we not only had the Exxon Mobil thing, which actually wasn't a big number because we sell it quickly once you realize how things are going to fall, but we have the ongoing tax appeal with Citgo, which is now Newstar, which we're hoping to resolve, it's 320,000. Energy cost is $293,000. All of us know what's happened here. But interesting because, it, you know, we always talk about this. It cost us $92,000 a year for streetlights alone. That's what streetlights cost. And then the balance of that is just general energy, and that includes, uh, you know, general operations. Debt service, because we carry some debt, and $160,000. That makes up just about 77% of the budget. The rest are miscellaneous. Uh, they all add up, though. Now we're going to break down salaries, because many people ask me, where are we going, how are we going salary-wise, and who's making what? And this will give you a sense of the breakdown. Uh, and remember, these numbers are rounded, so the donkeys aren't the best. Uh, this mayor and council, each of us receives uh, a salary. Uh, the mayor pays, these are rounded numbers. Uh, I get paid, I think, about 6000 thereabouts. Council members are 1000 behind, so if I'm 6100 they're 5100 it, It's in that range. But the total amount, as you can see, is 38000 and change. That's for the entire governing body. Clerk and registrar, 53000 and change, and seven, representing 1.9. Tax collection and assessment, 67006 General financial administration, that's the run the operation. That includes the financial oversight, 136000 Code and housing, 63000 almost 64000 Highway and vehicle, which is the street and highway department, plowing streets and all the details that go along with 450000 Construction code and uh, LEA the fire code official is uh, 84,008. Our court system is 121,000, and our police department, which is our largest activity, is 1.7 million dollars. Crossing guards, which you have to have, uh, are 61,000 change, and in this lane is 6,200 dollars in change, giving you an idea of over over spending and salary, to give you an idea of how it contributes to the budget. Now, let me talk about the blue plant settlement, because this is the driver uh, that, that has taken everything out of whack. Uh, first, some background. And I don't, I'm not going to be long-winded, because with the questions, we'll, you know, we'll build up some answers as we go. This appeal started in 2002. At the time this started, our ratio and our residential market was very stable. Our ratio, meaning what the property was assessed at and what properties were selling at, was sitting at about 97%, which was pretty good at the time. Uh, and then as we move forward, heading into 2007, the ratio fell apart because our real estate market got hot, as we all know. And then, of course, it backed off a little bit. But we were down to a ratio of 68.4%, which is not good. 
uh, but that's because we had the anomaly of a real estate market that caught on fire, and Volcker was actually ahead of the curve in percentage increases. And we started when, first of all, in the last years that Mobile had the operation, they came to us and said, we have an issue with the assessment. We have a problem with it. We met with them. We reached in court. We reached a satisfactory level of about $46 million, give or take a few. Exxon mobilized them within two years, again, give or take, on the calendar. It could have been two and a half years, whatever that term was. They come in immediately and appeal their taxes. We say to them, wait a second, tell us. We've made an agreement. We have an understanding. We made an adjustment. Everyone was happy. And their answer was very simply, it's not mobile anymore. It's Exxon. Now, we felt very, very confident in the early years of this appeal, 2002, 2003, 2004, even 2005, we were in pretty good standing, that we could, we could argue the assessment we had on it, had a good chance of winning. We're prepared to make the investment, legal investments to make the argument. A couple things happened. Number one, the real estate market went wacky in a good way for homeowners because people picked up more equity in their homes, but it threw the ratio off. That hurt us. What hurt us, what, and then what hurt us even further was, there's a term that only a few people in this room will recognize, but I'll give you background. Jim Sabat is here as a former mayor. He understands this stuff inside now. Uh, Elvin Hampton is here as a former mayor. He understands it. And this governing body and myself have come to understand it. In 1992, New Jersey passed what's called the Business Retention Act, which was designed to help industry stay in New Jersey and allow industry to have certain benefits on how their property was assessed for taxes. I honestly say to you, looking back on it, it was never intended for operations like an Exxon Mobil. But nonetheless, they took advantage of the tax codes because they could. Didn't have to, but because they could. By, by, by pushing the Business Retention Act to their benefit, by explaining the fact that our ratio had fallen apart, and by the court finally deciding the case that was called Linden, the municipality of Linden, New Jersey, versus General Motors, actually General Motors versus Linden. General Motors appealed their taxes at their facility, which has been closed for many years. They appealed it a long time ago, possibly closed to 30 years ago. The court finally got around to ruling, and that's how long these things take. Like, for example, the tax appeal related to what is now Sunoco and West Effort, which originally was Texaco, then it was Coastal, which is dragging on in excess of 20 years. The court is not often fast to rule on these kinds of complicated tax issues. But the court finally spoke in the mobile and in the General Motors versus Linden case. That ruling did not help us in our argument on the Exxon Mobil case, independent of the ratio. Upon realizing that an argument was taken from us because that the court interpreted the tax code, we had we had to negotiate ourselves. Now in fairness to Exxon Mobil, if you can say that in the same sentence, but in fairness to Exxon Mobil, they could have pressed us so that for the early years of tax appeal, going back to 2007, and how the law worked is we would have had to refund it. We would have had to borrow. It could have been up to $5 million. Exxon Mobil agreed to waive the early years. By the way, we would have still argued that our standing there, because the ratio hasn't fallen apart yet, we, you know, we could have had some argument. But it wasn't a short thing, it was going to be expensive, and it wasn't it didn't make sense. So we made a decision and worked with them, and they, and they, they decided not to ask for their $5 million. In exchange for that, we're feathering in, and it's no feather landing for us, these three years, over a three-year period, of what's going to be their new assessment. Could be some changes to that, but that's where we are, and that's how we got to this point. So the bottom line is that this, this issue we're facing uh, is because of this industrial tax appeal. When that new plant was built, it saved this municipality and its tax base, and today Oxfam Mobile has decided that they need to pay less taxes, and they're exploiting the tax code to their benefit. So from our standpoint, the big issue is where do we go from here? What's the plan? 